the reason why I wanted to share the SOAP Bible study method is because I personally used to be very scared about reading the Bible because honestly, I didn't know where to begin. I didn't have anyone showing me where to go in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't know which translation to use. Heck, I didn't even know there were multiple translations. I thought it was all the, thy, thou. And I was like, (sighs) I I don't talk like that. I don't, I don't comprehendo that. So um, (laughs) I just feel like the SOAP method has been able to to help me not only relate to the Bible, but relate to God, my creator. And when you know you're a creator and his heart for you, you can learn to appreciate him and love him more and more. And you just want to crave and read the Bible even more. Welcome to the Intertwined Life podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Zentz. I am a wife and a mom on a mission. I've got a passion to help women discover practical ways to apply the power of God's word to our everyday stuff. I truly believe that our walks with the Lord should be seamlessly intertwined with our everyday lives. It should affect every move we make and every breath we take. So come on, let's do life together. You've got this, because He's got you. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Intertwined Life Podcast. We are in February now of 2021 as I record this. So we are one month in, and I hope that your new year is going great. But even if it's not, it's okay. Let's push the restart button and jump back on there. Um, You know, some people set goals, some people set resolutions, some people don't. I kind of go back and forth. But um, if you had a goal this year, maybe to actually start getting deeper into the Word of God, or maybe just start studying it for the first time, but you don't know where to start, or maybe you've been studying it for a long time and you just need some fresh ideas. Either way, this episode is sure to offer you some great tools for wherever you are on your journey. Um, we're going to interview Jeannie Terry. She's the host of the Say So with Jeannie podcast. And I actually had the privilege of being interviewed by Jeannie on her podcast just before we recorded this interview. So when you finish this, uh, finish this episode, I would encourage you head to those show notes and click on that link where Jeannie interviews me and the tables were turned and it was a lot of fun. And you'll get some more details about me personally and my backstory as well. So I think you'll enjoy that. But before you go anywhere, check out this interview that Jeannie and I did. Here in this talk, Jeannie walks us through one of her favorite methods for Bible study. The method is called SOAP. S-O-A-P. And as Jeannie shows us, it can be as simple or as in-depth as you make it. So if you're looking for a little more structure with a lot of room for grace, we've got you covered. Enjoy this and I'll catch you on the other side. Jeannie Terry, welcome to the Intertwined Life Podcast. Hey, Jenny. So good to be here. It's so good to have you here. And Jeannie is a friend of mine who lives very close by, actually. So we know each other. We have a lot of mutual friends and started podcast about the same time. She's actually the one who gave me the final boost of courage I needed to just push publish. Thank you, Jeannie, for that. I believe you started yours the day before I hit publish on mine because I was like, okay, just do it. Just do it. Um, So Jeannie, I am so glad you're here. And Jeannie is the host of the Say So podcast, I guess the full title is Say So with Jeannie, right? And can you tell a little bit about your backstory yourself and then about the show and what motivated you to get started? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me on uh, today, Jenny. It's such an honor and such a pleasure. I didn't know if this day would ever come. So thank (laughs) you. Um, Like Jenny said, my name is Jeannie Terry. I'm the um, host of the Say So with Jeannie podcast. Um, I'm married to my wonderful husband, Stephen, and we just celebrated our 10th year anniversary. We live in Melbourne, Florida, and we have an eight-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son, and my hobbies are reading, writing, and uh, within the last year, podcasting. (laughs) Um, I'm currently pursuing a degree in theology at East Coast Christian University, and um, just on a personal, another little personal side note, I have more shades of pink lip gloss than I know what to do with. (laughs) You and me both. <laughs> really? Are you into glosses? It's all like, I don't know, maybe 30 shades of pink. Um, and I, what I enjoy most in life is listening to and encouraging others and deep discussions are my jam. There you go. Good stuff. What got you interested in starting a podcast? So I uh, came up with the idea after doing a few podcast episodes for my home church, which is East Coast Christian Center. Oh, yeah. And yep. And I had the honor of interviewing some women who had poured out their hearts, um, regarding some very painful uh, circumstances that they had gone through and they were able to overcome them. And, you know, what would have crushed them, uh, God used to to sharpen and to strengthen them. And these women just wanted to share their story for no other reason 
than to share their hope with other women um, who might be going through the similar circumstances. And just hearing their stories just empowered me because it reminded me of how God cares about all of us simultaneously. Like he's not over here caring about Jenny Zents one minute and then the next day he's caring about Jeannie Terry or Bob Jones. Mm -hmm. You know, he's caring about caring about all of us at the same time and, and working things out for good in our lives all at the same time. Yeah. And God is trustworthy and he can be found all throughout all of our stories if we take the time to notice him and acknowledge him. And mm. I just knew that there were more women with more stories of how God rescued them. And one day I came across, um, or I don't know, maybe the Holy Spirit led me to mm-hmm. Psalm 107 too, which states, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and tell their story. Amen. And I believe that there's power of salvation um, can be found in just your regular everyday conversation. And I wanted to put regular everyday conversations that I was having in a podcast because I know they were blessing me so much that I wanted other people to be blessed and encouraged and inspired by them as well. And I just believe that um, the Say So podcast provides a safe place for women to share their story. Um, And I believe one person's story can be the very story another woman needs to hear to begin her own rescue story. And actually, I have an episode devoted to the why behind my podcast, and I would love to direct your listeners there. And that's yeah. my very first episode, episode one of the Say right. So with Jeannie podcast. I will definitely link to that in the show notes for sure. And yes. I'll also link up Jeannie and I just got off of <laughs> the call <laughs> where we did a live um, interview of me on her show. And now we're doing this one. So I that will link so to fun. that one too. That was a lot of fun, technical issues and all. <laughs> it was still a I blast. Know. I know. <laughs> no, it was I live. What, so what did you think? What did you think about doing it live? Um, I don't, I don't mind it. I I really don't mind it. Yeah. I kind of liked it. At first I was like, oh gosh. (laughs) And you know, what's cool about it, Jenny, is that I won't edit any of it. Like it's just raw. It's just real. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the best way anyway. I do, I do minimal editing when I do my shows anyway, because even when I mess up and say a word wrong and I'm like, (laughs) that's what (laughs) makes it real. Right. And relatable. I think that's a little bit more fun to listen to than something that's polished. So yeah, I thought it was good. I liked it. It was really fun. So I'm thankful for you once again, pushing me in the world of technology and (laughs) never know (laughs) where it'll lead you. I know for real. No, that was great. Um, so when I asked Jeannie about what she might like to talk about and share, she actually came up with the idea of sharing the soap method. And this is not a way of making homemade soaps for Etsy. (laughs) Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. Can you share with us what the soap method is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So soap is an acronym um, for uh, SOAP soap. So S stands for scripture, O is observation, A is application, P is prayer. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But the reason why I wanted to share the SOAP Bible study method is because I personally used to be very scared about reading the Bible because honestly, I didn't know where to begin. I didn't have anyone showing me where to go in the Bible. I didn't know which translation to use. Heck, I didn't even know there were multiple translations. I thought it was all the, thy, thou. And I was like, (sighs) I I don't talk like that. I don't, I don't comprehend that. So, um, (laughs) so I will tell you now though, that my top three uh, translations are NLT, the New Living Translation, the NIV, and the Message, just because they're easier for me to personally read. I'm sure. sure. What Do you have some favorites? I do. Um, but, you know, I'm like you. I, I have several, and for different reasons, you know, yeah. because of different volumes. Uh, the New King James was the one that I used growing up all through high school and all that because because it doesn't have the thou yeah. it, it just says you and your you know and that kind of thing yeah. but it keeps it very close to the same but it takes out the harder you know old english words so i really enjoyed that growing up and then i actually the nlt is another great one the new living translation i enjoy that to give a another perspective but my favorite is the amplified i use the amplified classic and you have to grow into that one because it has so many extra words (laughs) yeah but once you get there um it just expounds you know on the meaning it takes the original greek and hebrew and where it may have been translated one way it says it could mean you know several different things to give you a fuller Mm -hmm. understanding of Mm -hmm. what the original text was saying so i really enjoy that one too but you're right there's a lot of blessings we have and having the different versions. And I like to read the same scripture in several versions to mm-hmm. get a fuller understanding of what was going on there. That's yeah, good. absolutely. That's good. Um, so earlier in my faith walk, when I would read the Bible, I just felt lost. I felt discouraged. I felt like it was over my head. How do other people read the Bible? Like, how do they understand it? And I don't understand sure. what, what it's, what's being said, mm-hmm. but soap helped change that for me. And, um, 
SOAP is a method or a way of approaching Bible study from a very objective and deeply personal way in which we can apply it to our everyday lives, kind of like your intertwined yeah. um, podcast. It's like applying God's word to our everyday lives. And a SOAP Bible study can take as little or as long as you'd like it to take. And using the SOAP method and asking the Holy Spirit to lead my study has led me to not only read the Bible to where I can understand it better, mm -hmm. but also to lead me to know God better and strengthen my relationship with her, with him. I mean, I've heard, I heard one, I heard someone say a long time ago, we can either be as far as away to God as we want to be, or as close to God as we want to be. Mm -hmm. And that has stayed with me. And that has helped me know that it's really um, up to me to reciprocate the relationship that he has, um, he has begun with me. He created me. He, he began a, re a good work in me. He began a relationship with yeah. me and it's, it's two way relationships are two way streets and it's my responsibility to reciprocate that with him. Yeah. So, uh, like any relationship grows, we have to be intentional in our time that we spend with God. And it's really not out of ab obligation, but out of love and appreciation for what he's done and continues to do. I would hate Jenny for you to maybe interview me on this podcast because you felt obligated. I would want <laughs> you to like enjoy it, you know, yes. and the same thing. Like, I don't, I don't want someone to have to spend time with me because they feel obligated. I want them because they enjoy it. And God's the same way. He's like, you're not obligated to do this. Like, don't do it. Don't think you're doing it for me. Like you spending time mm -hmm. with me, Jeannie is for you, Jeannie. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's good. I always say that about our kids too. You know, yeah. if we like forced our kids to give us a hug and forced them to tell yeah. us they loved us and forced them yeah. to talk to us, it really wouldn't mean as much, you right. know, it's tell when they want to do those things. <laughs> they do what? Tell, tell me, me you love yes. me. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah, like there's, no. there's not depth in that. And, and that's why there's so much grace and freedom in being a Christian. You know, I, I love to say Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship, yeah. you yeah. know, and it's, it, there is everyone's relationship is going to look a little different because mm -hmm. we are all different. And God knows that. And I think he relates to all of us differently. You know, there is one way for reconciliation with him and getting into heaven. And that is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and that alone. Once we get that done, how your walk with the Lord plays out in your everyday life is going to look very different from your neighbor or your sister or your husband, right? right. And I feel like it's the same way with our kids. Our kids are all different. And we yeah. don't necessarily parent or relate to each of our children the same because they're yeah. very different personalities. And God does that with us too. And I think sometimes people get caught up that it has to look a certain way and get yeah. intimidated by someone else's story or someone else's walk and kind of feel like, I think it's a trick of Satan. He wants to paralyze us with that fear of, mm -hmm. well, you'll never be that spiritual. So why try? Or, <laughs> right. you know, you don't understand the King James version. So what's the point? Yeah. And well, I'm he's glad always trying that... to set us up against each other and compare, yeah. our, make yes. us compare ourselves to each other. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Oh my god! But gosh. like you said, you hit it on the head though. It's, it's relational and we're all different. So all of our journeys are going to look different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so our spiritual good. gifts. I mean, everything yeah. is all different. And I, yeah, I, I love that. So I'm glad and that you yeah. brought that. Yeah. And it's different on, it's different for a reason, you know, mm -hmm. like I think it was Joyce Meyer and I don't know if she originated the story or who, if she got it from someone else, but like, if I'm an eye of like an eyeball and a ring, mm -hmm. did you hear this one? Where like a, a finger, like the difference between an eyeball and a finger, like the finger gets to wear the ring mm -hmm. and the eyeball gets to look at the ring on the finger and the eyeball can say, wow, I'm really jealous. Look what that finger has. It gets to wear a ring, yeah. but like, it's like, well, the ring or the finger is just a placeholder for the ring. Yeah. But the eye is the one that gets to look enjoy and enjoy the ring. So it's nuts. Like we all like, you know, sometimes we just want to compare and like you said, oh, you'll never be as spiritual as that person. Mm -hmm. Like, and then you feel like inadequate, but it's like, yeah. maybe you weren't, maybe that person isn't as spiritual as you thought, or, and that's not the goal is to be more than somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're not all the same. Like we express right. ourselves, our feelings are different. You know, the way I'm act in worship and the way my husband acts in worship is very different. And yet at the same time, I don't think either one of us have, you know, a lesser walk with the Lord, you know, right. we're just different people and we express things different. And I think you're right. right. And I think when we realize that we can then be free to be us, but also be free to encourage and cheer each other on, right. Yeah. Support each other because we're not in competition yeah. with each other. You know, God's got a place for all of us and his own thing. He's working out in each of our lives and somebody else's story doesn't take anything away from yours. You know, if, I if, love that. if you're walking strong in your faith, it doesn't mean there's less faith walk for me to have. Right. right. <laughs> it's like, you right. go girl. Right. Plenty to go around. Yeah. yeah I like that.
Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times God will use someone else's blessing to show us that it's possible and mm-hmm. that, you know, we're next. Like God's that's not going to do something for Jenny that he's not going to do something for somebody else. Yeah. Like, oh, that's good. Like, look what good. I can do. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. And I think that's why I like to podcast so much is because I see what God's doing in other people's lives. And I'm like, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Like if he's going to do it for them, he's going to do it for the person listening, or maybe he's going to do it for me, depending on like what it is that we're needing in life, you know, yeah. but we also don't want to look at God about what he can do for us. Right. Yeah. We also just want the relationship because yeah. what he can do for us on earth is great, but we need to really focus on the eternity that he's already given us. Mm-hmm. So. Amen. And it's so good. Either You're way. right. Like seeking either way his- we win. Yeah. Just seeking his presence and the closer we draw to him, he, you know, like he says, he gives us the desires of our hearts, not necessarily gives us whatever we want, but makes us to want the things he wants for us, you know, and the more we know him, the more we can be confident and at peace in where he has us. And no, that's, that's good good stuff, Jeannie. Confidence and peace in the Lord. I love that. Amen. Hey mama, did you know that every single episode of the Intertwined Life podcast is like its very own Bible study? So many times I hear people say, I really want to start reading my Bible more, but I don't know where to start. Hey, I get that and I've got your back. All you have to do is go to jennyzens.com slash podcast or click on the show notes. Each and every episode has its own post on my website. And in those show notes, I have listed every single scripture that I reference in each episode and linked it up to Bible Gateway. And honestly, I'd rather you sit with the show notes and open up your own Bible, you know, the one with pages. (laughs) There's just something about holding the word of God and digging in with your highlighter, your journal, and probably a cup of coffee, right? But every single episode you can do that with. So that means it's even arranged by topics. And then you've got tons. Some of these episodes have more than 30 scripture. Don't sit down and do them all at once. Pick a show, go through, sit with the Lord, take your time, do one or two verses a day, gather a group of friends, start an intertwined live Bible study where you literally listen to the episode and then just go through the show notes, looking up those verses, looking for verses to memorize, write those suckers down, put them on note cards around your house. They'll soak into you and produce the life that God has for you. I love it. And I want you guys to dig into the word so you can stand on what you know, regardless of how you feel. And you can really be ready to apply the power of God's word to your everyday stuff. All right, back to the show. I just feel like the soap method has been able to help me not only relate to the Bible, but relate to God, my creator. And when you know you're a creator and his heart for you, you can learn to appreciate him and love him more and more. And you just want to crave and read the Bible even more. And, you know, I know everyone's doing resolutions and goals and stuff. It's the new year. And, you know, I hear people say, you know, that whole read your Bible in a year and kudos to you. If that's your goal, wow, that's really amazing. I'm not trying to crush that, but um, I I just want to ask or, you know, bring to your mind, why are you trying to read the Bible in a year? Is it for a kudos? Is it for a check mark? Is it to say, look at, look at me, I'm getting a gold star. I, I read my Bible in a year, or is it for bragging rights? What is it truly for? Um, because I don't know about you, but when I read my Bible, I actually have to maybe read it. If I'm reading a chapter or verse, I've got to go back and read it again because I don't fully understand it. Sure. Or I have to pray about it, or I have to kind of sit and meditate on it for a little bit to, to kind of get the context and everything yeah. that's going on in that situation. So, uh, I feel that, uh, while reading the Bible in a year is good, if you do that, at the end of the year, I want you to, to go back and, and, and ask yourself, what did I learn? Yeah. Because if, uh, if all you did was read the Bible in a year and you didn't get anything out of it, um, yeah. ask yourself if that was worthy and if you're going to do that again. Sure. Yeah, I, know, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's the pursuit of, of him and him building a relationship more than just checking a box and getting through it, you know, and, right. and there's a time and a place for that and it's good, but I agree with you. Take your time give yourself plus you can also put so much pressure on yourself that then when you miss a couple of days because oh. you're going to you're going to it's yeah. life then you just yeah. get discouraged and give up you know or you're what's you're the gonna, point like, i'm gonna read 10 chapters today and you're yeah. gonna be like i can't because i've got kids and cooking and, mm-hmm. and you're stuck away. in leviticus and you have no idea what the <laughs> heck you're doing right i mean if you can get through leviticus like that is the thing right. that's the goal but but it's true and there's so much more power in just showing up with the lord every day and even yeah. if it's one or two verses letting him speak that truth and getting that down in you you know because yeah. so, no, that's yeah. very good because 
Because what good is reading the Bible in a year or any amount of time if you have no idea what you read, can't repeat it, and you haven't even grown closer to God? Yes. Yes. So um, with that said, <laughs> so, like I said, the S is for scripture. So um, you physically write out your scripture. Um, o is for observation. What do you see in the verses that you're reading? What stands out to you? A is for the application. This is when God's word becomes personal. What is God saying to me? How can I apply what I just read to my own personal life? What changes do I need to make? Is there any action I need to take? And then P stands for prayer. Pray God's word back to him. If he has revealed something to you during your, your Bible study time, pray about it. If you need to confess and repent something, this is a great opportunity because he might bring things to your mind that you're like, okay, we need to talk about that. Like I need, that is wrong. I didn't even realize it is wrong. And I did this and it's wrong. I need to repent to my creator, God, and, and um, thank him for his forgiveness. I didn't need to move on. And if I need to go and, and make it right with somebody and God's putting it on my heart to do that, I need to do that. Sure. So, so I'm hoping that you can see that the SOAP method is a very personal way for each of us individually to get into our Bibles, read it, and ask God what he wants to reveal about himself to you, or maybe it's what he wants to reveal about you to you. That's really good. That's good. Now this, the S part, you write out whatever it is you're studying, the whole thing? Yeah. And usually, cause so like if, if, so let's say, and what I do currently is um, my home church is East Coast Christian Center and mm -hmm. they have a podcast called Morning Breath and Morning Breath actually does this soap method. They choose, okay. uh, we, they have a schedule and it's online at eccu.com and you just follow the link to Morning Breath and it'll tell you the schedule. So we're in January and it'll give you the whole list of January, what they're going to be talking about on Great. air. Uh -huh. And um, you can follow along. So cool. but there's been times in my life where I'm like, okay, I'm super anxious. I'm going to myself look up any, get my concordance and find out where the word anxious appears. And mm -hmm. I'm reading all of those scriptures and I'm soaping all of those. Scriptures. Perfect. Perfect. So you can do that too. You don't have to follow a regimen. We're not making this legal or religious or anything like that. It can be totally tailored to whatever you're going through. Absolutely. Um, and so um your, so your question was, do you write the whole thing out? Well, if the whole verse or whole chapter, let's say, is Romans 8, which is what we're going to talk about today, I would only write out the verse or verses that stood out to me. Okay. So it gotcha. could just be like Romans 8, 1 is mm -hmm. what stands out to me. And I'm going to write that out. But mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to journal this because eight months from now, eight years from now, I'm going to be like, whoa, look mm -hmm. at what God did. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. If I didn't write this down, I probably would have never remembered this. Yeah. And that's just another way to just get to know him more and love yeah. him more because his promises are true and he is faithful. I, yeah, so that's I why I like to write it out. You don't Absolutely. have to do, we don't have yeah. to be legal about it. If you don't have the time, you don't, but I really encourage journaling. Yeah. I like that. And I like what you said there, you know, we need to have the freedom to, the Lord's going to speak to us individually. And so if it's, verse jumps out to you. It may not jump out to your neighbor, but you know, yeah. grab that thing. And I I'm a big believer in note cards and I write scripture out of note cards. And I think yeah. memorizing the word is powerful. And I always encourage people to put them around your house, on your coffee pot, in your car, where you keep your yeah. keys next to your toothbrush, dry yeah. erase marker on your mirror in your bathroom. Yeah. So that every time you see it, if you see it several times a day, you just read it and yeah. eventually you'll accidentally memorize it. Right. And accidental. so I think that that's what accidental you're saying. Memorization. Great. Yeah. Like accidental memorization. Well, and what I like about soap is it actually started um with my pastor jessica stahlbaum she started do, she we started meeting in someone's home a small group um probably four years ago so soap can be in a small bible study it can be on your own it can be on a podcast mm -hmm. like we're doing right now mm -hmm. i mean so and it, it's been a method that i don't know how long how far it goes back to or who came up with it but sure. um it's, it's not something great. new yeah. And it's great though, because like you said, it's the first of the year. And a lot of people, maybe for the first time are like, I'm going to, I'm going to try this growing in relationship with Jesus thing. And yeah. they maybe they, it's not been a part of their life. They're not sure, like you said, where to start or what to do. Right. And I think this is something this structure offers a very attainable way to dig in with yeah. enough structure that you know kind of what to do with it, but enough freedom that you can make it your own. And I think that's what's so great about this. Well, awesome. You so are just, you're, you're, you're on it. You know, what this is, I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to sell anything, but you can sell this. You make it, make it sound great, Jenny. Well, Remember, it is great, my though. degree is in politics, so I can mm. only. <laughs> I can't. 
I can talk my way through stuff, whether I know what I'm talking about or not. (laughs) Um, Well, okay. So let's, yes, you mentioned Romans eight. So would you like to um, walk us through an example of how you would soap Romans eight? Yeah, let's soap it. Um, So I can read Romans eight for you. Sure. I mean, that might take a a few minutes, but um, so I'm going to read from the NIV version, new international version, and I'm on biblegateway.com. Yeah. and uh Romans 8 and the subtitle is life through the spirit and it starts like this therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through jo- Christ Jesus the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God, It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even through, though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought you your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters and those he predestined he also called those he called he also justified those he justified he also glorified what then shall we say in response to these things if god is for us who can be against us he did not spare his own son but gave him up for all of us how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. 
who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or COVID as it is written <laughs> for your sake. I put that in there for your sake. We face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Good that stuff. That was a should, long one. Woo! But it's good. You should have your own app. You could read the Bible and listen to audio with Jeannie. Oh, <laughs> that was good. That was I'm good. Gonna, uh, I'm going to take note. I like that. <laughs> so no, that's that Romans good. 8. That, that, you know, had I read this, 10 15 5 maybe a year ago like i would have been like the flesh the spirit like sure who died he's sitting next to me like what <laughs> it, like i i don't know i still i don't comprehend all that but i'm not going to not read my bible because i don't get all that yes yes that's so good because you're right there's a lot there and we're there's humans a ton there. <laughs> our brains it can only take so much i know mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. that was 39 verses that's yeah. a lot not every chapter in the bible is this long <laughs> some are much shorter some are much longer so that was so that was a chapter now you take a scripture jenny did anything stand out to you am i putting you on the spot no that's fine girl i <laughs> i always read my bible with highlighter in hand <laughs> so this chapter is pretty marked up so i can just pick any of them um, I always tell people, you know, some people are like, oh, I use this color when it means this and this color refers oh, to this. God. I'm like, whatever color just means that's the highlighter I had at the time. Right. <laughs> just like, there's all different stuff. colors. Let's see. All right. Um, oh, well, one of my favorite ones. Um, oh, hang on. <laughs> uh, there's too many. There's too many. Just pick one. All right. Uh, all right. How about verse 11 and the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells oh, in yeah. you. Yeah. Oh man. I love that. That's oh, good. I love that. The power of the almighty God lives on the inside of us. So that's one I love. Okay, so, that so that's your observation. How are you going to apply that? What does that mean to you? Well, cause I mean, to me, what pops up is then I go, oh, that relates to Ephesians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And why can I do all that? Because the power of the almighty God lives in me and it gives me the confidence to face whatever he brings me to, right? What he brings yeah. you, he'll bring you through, right? So yeah. to, that's, to me, it definitely gives me that confidence that it's no longer me who has to figure things out and get through mm. the hard times, but that's anything good. can be reached because the power of God lives on the inside of me. The same that's one who good. raised Christ from the dead. That's good. So if you realize that, and I'm not saying you, maybe there was for someone listening that um, there could be a lot of questions surrounding what you just said. But sure, I would say for for someone who's listening, who's like, well, well, how do you how do you, how do I apply that? What does that even mean? Because that means I can do all things, and I can I have my strength and my confidence in Him. But how do I? What changes do I need to make? How do, <laughs> was it, you're slurping, you got the end. Sorry, end I have my screen. smoothie and I took a drink. I think it like slurped through the microphone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we may or may not Do edit not that, edit that out. Don't edit that out. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> sorry. But it's, it's one thing I think to say, like, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. It's his power. So, mm -hmm. and I don't have to figure it out anymore, but what does that mean? Like, how, how would you apply it? So let's say, um, I am really fearful about, I'm just going to use this because I hear it so much lately. I am fearful about I, driving a car. I won't even drive a car. I am so scared of getting in an accident. How can I maybe apply this to the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in me? So I would say, well, you can apply it because if, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, you absolutely can drive a car. Get in. <laughs> Get in. Like, I love it. it. <laughs> Face yeah. your fears because you can do it. Whether or not you believe you can do it, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. If you're just, and I'm just saying, if you're scared, I've, I hear too many people that they're 16 now, they're 18 now, they still don't have a driver's license. Yeah. Because they're scared. What's with that? I can't even imagine. <laughs> it blows when my I was mind. 15, I wanted to, I was like, chomping at the bit. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, it's a spirit of fear. God did yeah. not give us a spirit of fear, but of boldness, power, and sound mind. That's another yeah. verse. But 
it's it's about what can you conquer because now that you know you have that spirit living on the inside of you because you're saved. This doesn't yeah. apply to you if you're not saved. Amen. Yes, that's and that's a good point. We have to we have to state that. You know, we're talking about someone who has accepted Christ as their savior and put their faith in Jesus. Um and then once you put your faith in him, his spirit lives inside of you. So you're yeah, we need right. to definitely make that clear. So the application really is a, is you know, what is the scripture saying? How can I apply it to my own personal life? What changes do I need to make? Because we cannot be content with saying how we are. We have to um, continue our growth. Yeah. And the only way we continue to grow in our relationship with God is to trust him more. So if I'm saying I'm too scared to drive a car or I'm too scared to take a test that I have to take, or I'm too scared, or I'm too fearful, someone won't like me, or I'm going to be rejected. I mean, go down the list of things we're afraid of. Sure. We can apply, you can apply the verse that you just took and apply it to something in your life. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know? Maybe, maybe that's not even standing out to you. What do you do now? Okay, well, I need to pray about this. So God, you just said the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, so God, you're the one who raised Jesus from the dead. Um, he's living in me. Okay. So God, this is your word. I don't feel this. I don't feel the spirit living on the inside of me. Um, you know, and, and you raised him from the dead. I don't know how you do that. Cause did that. Cause I've never seen anyone raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. So, um, God, I'm just going to believe your word. I'm going to trust it. I'm going to go in faith that, that I do have your son's power living on the inside of me he lives on the inside of me so i might not feel that i'm not going to rely on my feelings because feelings are fickle mm -hmm. one day i might feel that i have his power inside of me and one day i might not mm -hmm. but i have to understand that if your word doesn't change that means the spirit's always living in me so mm -hmm. my prayer lord is that you make this verse applicable to me so that when i feel fear or whatever it is I'm going to remind myself Romans 8, 11, and I'm going to maybe even write it out on a verse and, mm -hmm. and say it every day until I can face my fear and, and realize what it is in me that's causing me to not move forward or progress mm -hmm. um, in this area of my life. So that could be your prayer. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. Because we don't, you know, we don't always... We don't always feel it, you know, and we just talked about this on the episode we did on your podcast, but yeah. it's not about feelings. And that's why my people always hear me say, you know, it's about standing on what I know, regardless of how I feel. And that's why we have to know the word of God. And there are times where we don't feel strong and we don't feel capable, but in and of ourselves, we're not, you know, and that's right. where he tells us. So I have this thing I do when I go through the scripture and if I find something that's a promise, mm -hmm. I like put an asterisk and I write promise and I underline it. And if anybody else is around, I go ding, ding, ding promise. <laughs> just <laughs> something I started years ago in a Bible study and I do it all the time, oh, but I have all these little spots in my Bible where I have oh. written an asterisk and written promise next to a verse because promises of God in numbers, it tells us he is not a man that he would lie. He would not promise and not deliver. And it's like, when we see a promise that is from God, we can bank on that no matter mm. how we feel. So I feel like when we can just say, you know, like you said, God, yeah. I don't feel anything, but I'm trusting you. I'm going to believe this. I'm going to put my faith in this because your word says so. And there's yeah. power in the word of God. And there's power in saying, yeah. God, this is your word for me. So I'm going to believe it and accept it and finding his promises and being able to stand on those and making those a part of our lives and, and committing them to memory so that they really take root. And like we were talking about earlier, it's, it's valuable to read the whole Bible. Sure. Especially if you yeah. say, this is what my life is based on. You should know what's in it. Right. But to go through scripture slower, yeah. to allow it to really take root in our hearts and to allow him to really speak, to really listen, you know, to yeah. not just read and go on and check a box, but to yeah. actually apply it to our lives and get it down deep in us so that when we need it, it pops up naturally, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it's planted in there. There's so much power in that. And this is a beautiful way to do that and to do it in a way that, like we said, adds some structure maybe to something that seems very ambiguous to people who yeah. maybe they're new to learning how to actually study the Bible. And yeah. it sounds intimidating for sure. Yeah, I, so this is great. I like what you said though. Like, so if we're in a, you said something like if we're in a situation, like we have to know the word because we can't maybe like scramble, like, oh, I'm yeah. in a situation. I got to scramble and read the Bible because I don't know what, what it says. Yes. Whereas if you 
meditate it on it day and night or memorize it or do whatever type of Bible study you're in and, and try to, to learn it and make it become a part of you. I, I've heard people say, when someone's under pressure, something's going to spill out because yes. of the pressure. And what's spilling out of us under yes. pressure? Is it anxiety and fear and panic or is it God's living and breathing word inside of us? Yes. I love it. I actually did an object lesson once um, when I did a speaking engagement with a sponge. And I was like, you know, this is us, this dry sponge, hard as a rock. You squeeze it, there's nothing in it. So our job is not to understand things. And I dropped the sponge in the water. Like the water is the word of God. Your job is just yeah. to soak in it, just oh, soak in good. it. And then when those hard times come and you put that pressure on that sponge, the living water comes out, so right? Good, and that's exactly what it is. That's, yeah. that's all it is. We, that sponge didn't really do anything. It just yeah. soaked in that water. Oh, and then good. when it had that pressure, what was in came out, right? And if we are not soaking in it, when those hard times come, we've got nothing to give. There's nothing in there, right? And, um, oh, there's so much power in that. And I think if we can take the burden off of ourselves to understand scripture and to get holy, <laughs> you know, yeah. if we can remove that pressure yeah. and, and make it just real and just like, just show up, just, so just trust him that his word is powerful and just show up and let him do the work. He will. Yeah. He and absolutely I, will. And I feel like this is, again, going back to the episode you and I just did was about um, waiting. Like I feel yeah. like waiting can be soaking. You can use a time if you're in a waiting season to yes. soak in his word. Like it's like you said, it's active waiting. It's yeah. soaking in his word. Like there's there might be nothing that you can see happening in your life. You're maybe not seeing God work in your life, but what what can you do in in the meantime? You can actively wait by soaking in the word. That's mm -hmm. such a good um, picture image. I'm a big image person. So yeah. I like that you gave me that image to hold on to. Yeah. And I love what you said about the promises of God and how you put an asterisk. You could do like a whole podcast series. Oh, the absolutely. Like, oh, absolutely. No, you're saying <laughs> you are so right. It would be like never ending for sure. I know. I know. Oh, but, I love um, it. So I wanted to tell you what my scripture is. What's the, yes, me. please. Um, it's actually Romans eight, six. And that says the mind governed by the flesh is death. Oh, actually, mm -hmm. let me go back to five. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. And I'm just going to stop there. Um, a, a while back, I would have, I don't understand the flesh. I don't understand the spirit. Like, what does all this mean? And I'm not, I don't really have time in this podcast episode to, to really define everything, but basically what he's saying is if you live by your sin nature and your flesh, you're going to desire what your flesh wants. Um, if you're living, if you are living um, by the spirit, which is God's will for us, it's going to bring us life and peace. So if we were to put this to today's standards, there's a lot of fear and panic and anxiety in this world that's mm -hmm. going on right now. Um, but if we have, if our minds are set on accordance to the spirit, we are going to, um, believe, have our minds set on what the spirit desires. So does God want us to be fearful, anxiety ridden and panic struck? Mm -mm. No, we already know that because when Jesus came, he said, peace, I live with, I leave with you. Yeah. When I leave, I'm sending a Holy spirit and he's going to comfort you. Like, mm -hmm. so we know that's not God's desire. So yeah. if we are living according to our flesh and what the world is telling us, we're going to live in panic and grief and, and, and fear. If yeah. we're living in, and renewing our minds like it says in an, another romans eight or romans scripture i don't know which one it is but if we're constantly renewing our minds and not being conformed to the pattern of this world then um we are going to have the characteristics of jesus um mm -hmm. and the fruits of the holy spirit love yeah. joy peace patience kindness goodness <laughs> too woo Amen. Gentle in the house and self control. We've got spirit. How about you? Yeah, sorry. I was in a, a kid's That's Bible club awesome. and I learned that song. It's awesome. Um, so, so, no. Yeah. No, so, awesome. so, my observation that's that's what stood out to me is that um, just the the fear and, and the culture of what's going on today. Um, if I renew my mind and have my, my mind set on the spirit instead of the things of this world, I would be more at peace. Um, mm -hmm. And how can I apply this? It's by when everyone's, uh, I don't know, panicking, setting their hair on fire. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the one not panicking, not setting my hair on fire. Mm -hmm. um, although I might feel fear and panic. Sure. I don't have to live by my feelings. Exactly. Oh, so, so good. 
Yeah. So yeah. I can say, gosh, you know, I'm feeling panic and fear. What, what do I do? Well, Jeannie, what scriptures do you remember? Well, I haven't been in the word, so I don't know. Or <laughs> um, I've been in the word a lot lately. Thanks for reminding me, Holy Spirit, that I have been in the word and I know there's scriptures about peace. So, mm -hmm. and I'm going to renew my mind because I forgot. And that was a second ago, like, yeah. because someone just said something to me that they heard in the news and now I'm really freaking out. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the word because, you know, the Bible is so true and it's never changing and people will say, oh, it's, it's not applicable to these times. And I had to use that <laughs> accent because when I they say it, it, they sound like that. I know. But, um, anything that is, is in the Bible is applicable, um, to these times because they are timeless, uh, virtues. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you know, you can't go wrong with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Those all, those apply all the time. Um, and then my prayer would be Lord Jesus, when, when help me to remind myself if I'm thinking a bad thought or if I'm thinking a thought about panic or fear that you would bring my mind in accordance to what your spirit tells me to do. And it's not to live in fear or panic because your word says you, you're for me, you know, and even in the bottom of this uh, chapter, it was, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who saved yeah. us. So I, I might feel panic or, or fear, but I have to stand on the word. Like you have said before, like we cannot be slaves to our feelings yeah. we have to be the masters of our feelings and tell direct tell our feelings where to go not have our feelings tell us where to go and we can only do that by being renewed in our mind and having our mind set on the spirit and not the mm -hmm. flesh yeah and i love what you said i mean it's not about never getting it wrong it's not about never feeling fear and panic and, and all of that. That's, that's not real. That's not realistic. I mean, we are going to have those same struggles and those same thoughts come to us and that same temptation. And Satan would love for us to get frozen and paralyzed by the fear and the panic all around us, because then we would be so focused on ourselves, yeah. right? That we would not be impacting anything for the kingdom because we're panicking like everybody else. And we look no different than everybody else. Right. But, and you know, it actually reminds me, we have a lot of hurricanes here, right? And we're yeah. on the coast of Florida. And I remember recently in a hurricane talking to the kids, there was one coming and people were just, it was a week away and people were flipping out. And even though this happens to us every year, people always completely flip out. And not, not that it's not kind of scary, but I remember, right. you know, the kids were like, uh, so in, where they were going to school for the last day before they were out because of the storm. And they're like, well, so-and-so left two days ago, you know, and all this. And I just told and them, you feel like you're behind, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. but I told him, I said, you know, and my husband at his office, like some people just lose their heads every time. And I said, here's the difference. We have the exact same experience. We're in the exact same storm. We have what, but what we can do. Some people are completely running around scared out of their minds. And here we are, we're not panicking. Now we are being wise. We're going to prepare. Right. We're going to put up our shutters. We're going to make a plan if we need to evacuate. We're going to do what we need to do, but we don't have to panic because we know who's in control. Right. You know, and yeah, we could get blown off the map, but we still know that God's got a plan. And because we right. can trust in that, right. we can walk in peace, even in the midst of our storm and in the midst right. of having those same threatening fears, but we don't have to give into those fears because we can stand on what we know. Right. And you're right. It gives us that grounding and it's, we're just as impacted. We're just as blown around, you know, and knocked right. up as any knocked up. That was probably not the right word. <laughs> knocked over, <laughs> beat up anyway. <laughs> don't you just love this real life oh, stuff? I love it. It's funny, but you know, we go through the same thing as everyone else. And, uh, right. but we, but we have a strength and that we're rooted in. And that's where, you right. know, that's where it comes from. We can look to him before we look to the right. storm instead of looking straight at the storm. And yeah. It gives us a different perspective. But, yeah. Uh, and we know God cares for us and he loves, he loves us. And even if something were to happen, we still, I mean, we win either way. We know where we're going. If, mm -hmm. if something horrible happens, you know, it, it's going to be used to give him some kind of glory. And we might not know what that is. And it's really not for us to totally grasp and understand everything he's going to allow Mm -hmm. um to happen mm -hmm. but um we if we know who he is and that he's for us and that he loves us we can um rest assured that he's going to take us through whatever yeah. storm it is yeah. and find us on help us to get to the other side yeah so. the more we're in the word the more we can develop what i call that even if nevertheless kind of faith you know when the hebrew yeah. children said 
I know he can save us from this fiery furnace, but even mm. if he doesn't, we'll still praise him. And they got thrown in the furnace, right? And mm. Jesus in the garden, Jesus himself said, Lord, there's any other way before the cross. Let this cup pass from me, but mm. nevertheless, your mm. will be done. And Jesus still went to the cross, right? Mm. And so it's not that we're never going to suffer and go through hard times, but if we can hang on to that faith and we can have that even if nevertheless kind mm. of faith, and we only get that by regularly growing in the word and regularly being in the word and just letting him build that up in us, you know, so good. So good good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if we can think that, you know, that Jesus Christ had an even if moment, he he was pleading with him, please take this. Mm -hmm. But if I have to do it, this it's because you're saying this and look, he sits at the right hand of his father now, like, hello, Mm -hmm. the interceding on our behalf. I mean, it had to happen. We all Mm -hmm. want to, you know, shoo shoo the pain away and this discomfort we don't want any of that but we do want the promise on the other side right yeah. so yeah it's a give and take yep good stuff Jeannie thank you so much for doing this I thank love you. it yeah that was fun um I, I love doing this I'm enjoying the interview process much more than I thought I would that's awesome um, before I close out I always ask a few questions uh, one of them is a simple practical tip to uh our listeners for how to intertwine their walks with the Lord in their everyday lives and that's what soap's all about so we'll yeah. <laughs> you yes. just get a whole episode on that yeah. so that is good there um do you have a life verse or a verse that's really speaking life to you right now um, well, I do like, um, where is it? I made a note on it. Oh yeah. Second Corinthians 10, five, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets, sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Do a soap mm-hmm. on that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But, that will be in the show notes. You guys yeah. go there, write that, pray that. Mm. Man, yeah, absolutely. Powerful. That one's good. I love it. All right. And do you have a resource that, I mean, obviously I'm going to link to the Say So podcast with Jeannie and that will be in the show notes for sure. Is there any other resource you like to point our listeners to? I love the YouVersion Bible app. Love it, love it, love it. Mm-hmm. If there's anything that you are dealing with, you type that thing in to the search bar there and uh, out pop, pops all the scriptures, all the devotionals, all the Bible plans that you can follow. I love the YouVersion Bible app and I can't believe people still don't know about it, but they don't. I know. So I want to lead people there. Yes. No, I agree. That's good. We'll definitely link to that. And you're so right. There's no excuse in our day and age, especially in America, of saying that they don't know where to start in reading right. the Bible. Because like right. you said, you literally plug in something and you'll get 20 plans that people have written devotions about and you read five minutes a day with a scripture. You know, I mean, it's yeah. there. So And it reads it, it to you. It'll yeah. read it to yes. you. I yes. love that. That is fun isn't it? Oh my God. My eyes are like aging. So as the, I was, my body is like decaying, like the Bible <laughs> says, but I am growing stronger in wisdom. So apparently, <laughs> um, but yeah, I love that it reads it to me and I can pick like what, what I want the person to sound like reading to me. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't know about that too. And mm-hmm. I, I don't think every version is like that, but I know the NLT and several of the versions, you can click on the little microphone at the top. And like she said, it will literally read the scripture to you. What a great thing to just have playing in your house because right. there's power in the word of God. So stick yeah. that sucker on. I love it. Yes. All right. And, and it comes uh, by hearing the word. Yes. Yes. Oh, actually I have <laughs> that verse written on my whiteboard in my kitchen right now. That's the one we're working on this cool. week in the house. Um, where can my listeners connect and find you? Absolutely. I'm on Instagram. It's just Jeannie Terry official. Okay. And also on um, Facebook, it's say so with Jeannie and, or they can reach me at my email, which is email Jeannie Terry at gmail.com. And I'm sure you said you'll put all the links in the show notes. So yes, I absolutely will. Awesome. Thank you, Jeannie so much. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you, Jenny. All right. Have an awesome day. You too. Bye. Okay, I hope you enjoyed listening to that interview as much as Jeannie and I enjoyed doing it. I know that if you will just dig in there and you will just let the Lord speak to your heart, just be still and sit with him and his word. He's got awesome stuff for you. I promise. Just show up and he will do the rest. And just so much great stuff there. So dig in, enjoy, check out those show notes because they're always, always, always full of scripture and the links to all of the resources we mentioned. So please head to those show notes where you can grab all of that. Head over to the Say So with Jeannie podcast, listen to some of the wonderful episodes that she has. And I also wanted to just give a little teaser because next episode, two weeks from now, 
is going to be a really special interview episode where I had the unbelievable privilege of interviewing a best-selling author that a lot of you may know. If you were ever around women's ministry at all around the year 2000, then chances are you have heard of and possibly studied through um, this author's best-selling book of over a million copies. I am talking about none other than Miss Joanna Weaver, and her book that I am referring to is Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World. I will never forget when that came out, and everyone was talking about it for years, and it's just like, oh gosh, that was me. <laughs> that was so me. And so she's written many wonderful books, but that's definitely the one that so many people are familiar with, and it has touched so many, many lives. And I had two hours. Now, the podcast episode is not going to be two hours. Don't worry. But it was such a crazy, awesome blessing. We Zoomed for two hours and just she poured into me. You know, I got to hopefully encourage her some and it was so cool and so wonderful. And I know that you are going to love this interview coming up in two weeks with Miss Joanna Weaver. And the title is A Space for grace. And goodness, don't we all need some of that? And she's got some awesome wisdom she's going to be bringing to us. So I hope that you will most definitely subscribe and be here for that one. And until next time, just remember that whatever God has called you to, he will equip you and empower you to do and do well with his help. You've got this because he's got you. Hey friend, if you enjoyed this episode and you got some good stuff out of it, there's a few options you have. One, you could click that little subscribe button because let's be honest, who's got time to remember to check back and see if there's a new episode, right? So click that subscribe button and then when a new episode comes up, it will just by the magic of the internet pop up in your Dropbox and it'll be right there for you whenever you're ready. And also, if you would review this podcast, Oh my gosh, if you like what you heard, get on there, give it a five-star review. If you didn't like what you heard, just pretend it never happened, okay? <laughs> but if you would do um, a review for me, just take a couple seconds and do that. Not only would I be crazy excited, but also it would just be a great way for us to partner together for you to help this podcast be seen by more women out there. And you could be a part of helping more women discover these practical ways to apply God's word to just everyday stuff. So I would love it, love it, love it if you could help me out in one of those two ways. Mm -hmm.